Hello, welcome back to my channel, Family Tech, where you get all the tech tips, news, and information you didn't even know you needed. Today we're talking about kids and social media. This is going into teens, tweens, all of the above. Um, one of the biggest questions I see a lot is, you know, my teen is starting out, what social media platform can I start them out on? And so today we're gonna get into all the different social media platforms that are available and what kind of parental controls are available on those social media platforms. So where do you wanna start out? We'll get right into that. So introducing your kids to social media can actually go in degrees. So when they're very young, like eight, nine, 10, tween age, I would definitely recommend something that is age appropriate. Um, my kids liked Animal Jam. It's been around for a really long time and it's still pretty fun. There can be some issues on Animal Jam. There can be predators and things like that. So there are different um, chat features that you can turn on and off for your kids as they grow. And then I would recommend just watching it in a monitored environment. So if they play it in a uh, kitchen or some other family area in the house, so you can always check in on the chat, see what's going on. Um, that's a really good place to start is something like Animal Jam. The other really good places to start is first Facebook Messenger Kids. This is a really, really good platform for tweens that are under 13 years old. First, it has to be tied to a Facebook account uh, for an adult. And in that, you can approve and deny any contacts that they want to interact with. So if they have other friends on Facebook Messenger Kids, you can um, allow them, you don't even have to be friends with the parent in order to add them at, for your kids. So the kids can add them with a code, add their friends and things like that. And they have a lot of really fun filters and, um, you know, so kind of like Snapchat filters where you can change your face to look like things. Um, and it's highly, highly um, monitored because you can approve and deny any of the contacts. It won't even allow you to send hyperlinks and things like that. So there's a lot of really great restrictions that you can put on for Facebook Messenger kids. And the really good upside is um, somebody else doesn't have to download Facebook Messenger Kids in order to interact with your child. So if you want to chat with your kid on Facebook Messenger Kids, you can just use the regular Facebook Messenger app and they can be using Facebook Messenger Kids. You will lose some of the features, like some of the fun filters and things like that if you're using the um, regular version, but the kids will still be able to have fun and use the filters, make their face look like a dog, and things like that. So Facebook Messenger Kids is a really, really good place to start, especially for under 13 years old. Um, the other really good places to start would be something like Marco Polo. Marco Polo, you have to know the person's phone number in order to add them to your account. So this makes it really safe in the fact that they have to know this person's phone number. Now, they shouldn't be giving their phone number out to strangers online and games or anything like that. So that might be something to be aware of to check and see who they are poloing with on Marco Polo. But Marco Polo um, is fairly safe. It's like a video walkie talkie. So um, I can send you a video message, you send me a video message back and things like that. So um, it's not going to be highly monitored because um, it's going to be video content content for the most part. So that's something you might want to just pop in every once in a while, see who they're poloing and see what those polos are about. Um, the great news is most of them will stick around unless they manually delete the messages. So um, that's another really good place to start. And along those lines, FaceTime, if your child does have Apple devices, they can FaceTime and use iMessage with people. Again, this should be people that they know. So if you use um, the screen time settings that are included with Apple, I have a whole video um, about how to set up an Apple device for a teen, but um, you can set up screen time so that they can only contact 
people that you have manually approved. And so they can interact with those people on FaceTime or on iMessage. And that's another really good place to start again for this under 13 crowd. So these are going to be tweens and um, maybe even early teens, 13 years old. So once we get past 13, a whole world of options opens up for your teenager. It doesn't mean that 13 year olds are ready for all of the social media platforms. It just means they are allowed to have an account after they turn 13 years old. That's going to be up to your discretion as to what social media platforms you are going to allow. So let's break them all down. So again, I would not recommend any of these prior to 13 years old. Um, all of these should be locked out until the child is 13 years old. In their terms of services, they cannot have an account until they are 13. So make sure you follow those age restrictions and guidelines. So the first one I'm going to talk about, um, a lot of people are shocked when I tell them that TikTok is probably one of the best ones that you can start your kids out with. And the reason for this is it has some really robust parental controls that you can set. You can set up your child's account to go under your account on TikTok. And then you can set up all sorts of things where they can't message people that they don't know or people that are not um, connected with them. They can't um, have any friends. There are, and you can set up a content filter. Now this content filter is not going to be perfect, but it's going to try as hardest to filter out any of the things that might not be deemed safe for the kid. Again, it's not going to be perfect. You still are going to want to check on their algorithm. So now TikTok is really, really smart. Their algorithm is probably one of the best social media algorithms that I have seen. Um, it learns what you like very, very quickly. So with TikTok, you might want to sit with your child for, you know, the first few weeks and browse TikTok together. Make sure they are watching videos that are interesting, that are related to things that they like. If they like Minecraft videos, make sure they're related to Minecraft or things like that. Um, do maybe some searches for different topics and really train that algorithm to figure out what your child likes, because then it's going to be less likely that they're going to see things that are inappropriate for them. Because if they stop on these inappropriate um, videos, they are going to continue to get those inappropriate videos. So you want to really take some time and train that algorithm to what your child actually likes and that is appropriate um, that you guys have deemed appropriate. So um, I honestly say TikTok is probably the best platform for your child to start out with, which is very shocking to a lot of people because a lot of people would probably say Instagram. Now, the problem with Instagram is it has everything that TikTok has, but it also has everything that Snapchat has and it has everything that Instagram has. So um, Snapchat, the big problem with Snapchat is the disappearing messages. Instagram also has those disappearing messages. Snapchat has stories. Instagram has stories. TikTok has their videos, TikTok videos. Instagram has reels, which are TikTok videos, essentially. A lot of people will upload the same kind of videos from TikTok to Instagram um, as a reel. So Instagram really has all of these different platforms and not very many parental controls. They are getting better, but nowhere near where they should be or n and nowhere even near where TikTok's level of parental controls are. So with Instagram, you get all of these different social platforms and none of the real like protections that TikTok has. So with Instagram, you can set up their account under your account, see who they are connecting with, who they are liking, who is liking their um, stuff, and you can set time limits through Instagram. That's the extent of the parental controls available on Instagram. So again, I would say Instagram maybe push off a little bit later um, and start out with something else like TikTok. Once they prove themselves with something like TikTok, then you can probably open it up to things like 
Pinterest. Now, Pinterest, there are a lot of issues with Pinterest. There is some inappropriate content on there. It also has TikTok videos. So uh, those short form videos, a lot of people will upload the same TikTok to Pinterest so you can view them there. Um, it has an in-app browser so you can tap on a pin and it will go to the website and it's still kind of within Pinterest. So if it's blocked, like if it's something that your content filter might block out, they might still be able to access it because the content filter really just sees it as browsing through Pinterest. It's not seeing the actual inappropriate website. So with Pinterest, you also have messaging. So people can be private messaging your children. There is no parental oversight on Pinterest. It's really, they've promoted it as a visual browser or a visual search. So you can look through all sorts of inappropriate content and access that inappropriate content through Pinterest and chat with strangers on Pinterest as well. Those are a few of the warnings for Pinterest. Um, but if you're able to, again, train that algorithm, make sure it is appropriate, um, you should be able to avoid some of that. And if you've had really good conversations with your children about social media, about the dangers that are out there, then you could be able to open up Pinterest and let them browse through that um, as a social platform as well. So now that we've gotten some of the like more benign ones out of the way, let's get into a little bit of the harder ones to manage. So a lot of kids like Discord. Now the problem with Discord is first access to strangers. There are a ton of predators on Discord. There is a lot of inappropriate content on Discord. So you would need to really monitor it well if you're going to allow your child to have Discord. So Discord can be monitored through the web browser or through an Android app with Bark and with a few other parental control platforms. So I do recommend Bark if you're going to allow your child to have Discord and it would need to be on an Android device. Bark cannot monitor Discord on an iOS device. So when you allow Discord, I would heavily monitor it at first. Um, and then as your child proves that they're not in any servers that are inappropriate, they're chatting with only people that they know in real life, um, then you might be able to let go of the reins, especially as they get older, 16, 17, um, you can let go a little bit of that. But Discord is kind of a wild, wild west. There aren't really any parental controls. The other thing you can do is you can log into their Discord account on one of your devices as well. So you can get the same notifications that they're getting. You can see kind of what servers they are joining and things like that. So that's another really good way to monitor Discord is to just log into it um, on one of your devices and monitor it that way. And then again, as they prove that they are, you know, understanding the dangers of, you know, strangers and the dangers of social media, they are not using it inappropriately and things like that, then you can open it up, monitor it less. But when you first allow Discord, I would absolutely heavily monitor that. And along those lines is Snapchat. Again, this is one that um, cannot be monitored well. Um, Bark can monitor instant messages in Snapchat, but it can't monitor the actual snaps. So they take a picture, they type some stuff on the picture, send it to their friends. The problem with Snapchat is streaks. This makes it highly, highly addictive. Snapchat streaks is what is really bringing the kids back to it every day. They are measuring their relationships by how long the streak is. So if I have a friend, like I say he's my best friend, but our streak is only like two weeks long, you know, we're like, oh yeah, that's not really your best friend. Um, so they are so concerned with keeping these streaks streaks alive, that they will give their Snapchat password to a friend um, if they are grounded from their device or if they're going on vacation and won't have access to the internet so that they can keep their streaks alive. Like it is that important to the kids. So I would definitely have a talk if you're going to allow Snapchat, um, again, about friending people who are friends in real life, wouldn't 
allow them to talk to people who are not their friends. And then also about streaks and how that really isn't a measure of their relationship. Um, and it's okay to let it go. Um, and definitely not okay to give your password to another person. That is something like you really should ingrain in your children that passwords should be held dear and safe and not given out to other people. The other problem with monitoring Snapchat is, you know, unlike Discord, you can't log into another device at the same time. So if you log into their Snapchat, it will log them out of the Snapchat. And if you view any of their snaps, they won't be able to view them because they disappear after they have been sent. So it's very complicated to monitor. So again, with Snapchat, I would recommend 16, 17 years old um, to allow Snapchat after they've proved themselves on other platforms. As you kind of step them through this social media world, you know, if they prove themselves earlier, like, hey, you know, I've had this, I've had Animal Jam, I've had Instagram, I've had this for a really long time, think it's okay for me to get into Snapchat, um, then that's a conversation that you can have with your child. But just know how difficult it will be to monitor Snapchat. The trust should really be established before you get that one. The other kind of wild, wild west um, sections is Reddit and Twitter. Um, both have very, very, very inappropriate content available. Um, Twitter for sure, uh, Reddit definitely. So Reddit is more of like a forum. Twitter, um, hopefully it's just really short um, tweets that are, you know, messages that you can follow and things like that. So um, both Twitter and Reddit um, have a lot of inappropriate content available. So I would hold off on those until way, way, way later. Um, again, you're not going to be able to monitor either of those very well um, through any of the monitoring platforms that you have. So um, because again, Reddit, you can just search whatever you want. Same with Twitter, you just search the hashtags and uh, or just search the topics. And so it's kind of a wild, wild west. And so you definitely wanna make sure that's kind of at the tail end of your allowing of social media. Now, one I haven't really mentioned is Facebook. The kids really aren't using Facebook, so I doubt they'll have a lot of um, asking you for Facebook, but um, Facebook would be okay, again, right at 13 years old. Yeah, at 13 years old, you can change their kids' messenger account to an actual Facebook account, and from there, uh, just go ahead and and allow it. But again, the kids really aren't on Facebook, so it's kind of neither here nor there on that one. So. If you have any questions about any of these social media platforms, please reach out to me. Um, I answer direct messages on Instagram the most. That's where I am most active. But um, if I do catch your comment here on YouTube, I'll answer it here as well. So that is the kind of stepping through social media. Uh, hopefully you've got some out of it. Definitely subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know next time I have a video and we will see you next time. Thanks.